opinion on it and get him back. What's your opinion of the no fans and all that? You know, it's it's different. I I expected uh yeah, you know, I just saw actually after St. Louis got bounced, Jordan Bennington talking about how the players miss that energy. And I'm sure they do. Like I just the the Mesa, the difference between a Tuesday game or a, or a Friday Saturday night game, you can feel a difference. So there's there's definitely a difference when there's no fans. Seth, we're we're talking about. I'm curious as as the guy who's in charge of the sound in the Mesa Arena on game nights. You know, when you're watching these games in the bubble and they're pumping in the crowd noise and they're playing the different stuff, like, you know, how, what kind of challenge do you think that would be to be the sound guy in in the bubble? So I've been listening actually to the, the music and stuff. And the first maybe 20 games in Edmonton, let's say, they were the typical music sounds. And, and you've kind of noticed the last couple of games, he's he started to get real deep in his playlist. Yeah. <laughs> the, the songs are starting to be very specific. I know there was a fight um, in the, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember, I think it was the Colorado game. There was a fight going on and they played the, the theme song from Friends, uh, <laughs> which was a, you know, I don't even yeah. know if kids know, know what Friends is anymore. <laughs> um, so he's definitely, they're, they're, they're running out of options and they're throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. So I think it could be a good thing because then they might be able to try something that they wouldn't try with fans. You know, it's sort of like a test experiment. Yeah. You know, it works in an arena. See how it works on TV. Um, as far as no fans and cheering, I think it it takes uh, it takes something off the the crew working the game because they don't really need to you know please people or read the room. They can just play the you know the songs. There's no extra stuff going on between whistles. So it seems like it's the no fans benefits that you know. I mean, obviously everyone wants fans there, but I think. You got to take the good out of this and what you can learn. You're also a big baseball fan too. Uh, you and I have spent a lot of time talking baseball um, when we were playing softball this summer. What's your opinion of that? Uh, kind of experiencing um, a baseball game or watching a baseball game where you're hearing a lot more different sounds than what you normal normally wouldn't hear. So. You know, baseball being outdoors, the the sound is, you know, it's harder to capture. I think when it comes to on TV, what it sounds like, and when when a home run's hit, you know, it, you would expect fans to cheer. But it being outside, there's no roof to contain the sound. So I I think what everyone has these memories of baseball is the crack of the bat, you know, the smack of the the mitt when the ball, you know, fastball hits it. You still get those baseball sounds, which I think is good. And then they're not annoying sounds. Like sometimes hockey, it's, you can only hear so many ice skates stop. You know, it's not a you know a sound that you uh, you associate with like uh, a memory like baseball. So I like that you can still hear the cracks of the bat and you know the way the ball hits the glove. Like that stuff's good, um, in my opinion. We've had a couple of fans chime in, and no fans are going yeah, to be allowed say, yeah, we're, we're at the Mesa. We're going to have fans at the Mesa. And uh, first, uh, first chance to get back in that building will be September 26th. We've got the alumni game, and then Toros and Aberdeen Wings preseason. And and Seth, I know for for us as a staff, it was a pretty disappointing way last year ended. Not because of anything the team did on the ice, but just COVID forcing that abrupt stop. How excited are you to get back in the Mesa and uh, and get back to putting on the show? I'm I'm just excited for competitive local market hockey you know it it really does matter i think um these kids are you know they don't have to worry about going to school i mean they're doing their own home schools but so they need something and they need um new friends and they need buddies and camaraderie i mean and the best way to do that when you're in that when you're in a, a league like the na is is to just get in the room and get a thousand fans around you and you you, you feel normal again and i think everyone needs to feel a little bit of normalcy. They need to be smart. Maybe wear a mask and stuff like that. You know, I'm speaking as a new father with a, a vulnerable <laughs> newborn. Um, you know, maybe we can make some Toros masks and we can put some some husks on them or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, can, we can get in there and we can cheer them on. You know. Now, uh, you know, what goes into your like? I think a lot of fans probably look at it. And go, oh, you just you've got a computer there and you just play music, but. I, I've watched you do your thing during games. How much thought do you put into you? You mentioned 
catching the NHL games that they're playing the theme song for Friends during a fight. How much thought do you put into what songs are going to fit in what which places on a game night? So I, I think um, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Um, if you hear a good idea on TV, I will steal it right away. I don't <laughs> care. I'll, I'll go on Spotify. I'll put my phone up the TV or not Spotify, Shazam. Um, we'll, whatever song it is, I'll, I'll Shazam the song on TV and I'll, and I'll put it right there. If I like the, the vibe it gave, if I like anything like that, you know, and then I think to myself, where would this work? Is this a first period song? Is this a we're down late in the game song? Is this a in between periods have fun song? You know, I have all those lists on the computer there of like the moment. And it's so easy to queue up. You know, you're in the third period, you know, okay, I got third period. And then if there's a crazy good face off we need to win, I got I got those songs in the one spot I need them. Um, but I steal from anyone and everyone possible. I mean, it's. It's an industry where you just got a, an idea against the wall. It works. It's it's great. You've been uh, you've been with us for a few seasons now. What is your favorite, or what are some of your favorite Toro memories? So I mean, I, the seasons that I've I've been around, um, I think we all have the same kind of area of a memory. Um, Subway Cup when we won that, I think three years ago. Um, with Rosenbaum and, and Sawchuck and those boys, you know, it's just some stupid little Subway Cup, right? You'd think, oh, it's a cheap trophy, you know, and, and then you win that thing. And to, you know, I've been in the, I've been in NHL rinks, I've been in the the Ingolstadt Hockey Arena when when stuff's been won, and the Mesa was just as loud. I mean, it was just rumbling. I I'm yelling on the mic. I got the mic turned all the way up. You can't hear me. It's pointless. I'm scratchy, gravelly, and it was over just beating. The, the capital city kitties. It was just over beating Bismarck. It wasn't great. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was great. And it's just, you know, the, the trophy, you can tell it's not just some stupid trophy. These, these kids want it. Yeah. And that was amazing um, to just be in the rink and be on the mic and not even hear myself. Uh, go ahead. What are, uh, so you show up usually to the rink about an hour and a half, yeah, not quite an hour and a half, but about an hour before puck drop. What are some things that you do to prepare yourself, whether it's mentally or physically with your voice, that you do to get ready for a game? So I don't, um, before the game when I'm at, at my house, I usually sing in the shower when I'm getting ready. I usually do all this stuff. If I have a game, I don't sing. I, I catch my breath. I say, don't sing. But the voice will go. So I'm pretty quiet um, before I get to the rink. Obviously, when I get to the rink, I do what every announcer does, and I get, you know, how do you say this guy's name, and, you know, how do you do this? That's all basic boring stuff. No one wants to hear that. But but I like to, during warm-ups specifically, I I don't know if Ken likes it, but I always walk and I watch the other teams warm up. I sit in the, that, that area by the, the Bud Light bar. I kind of lean on the rail there, and I just watch them, um, if, especially if it's the first time seeing the team. Um, I don't know line rushes. I don't watch any of that. I just watch, you know, for the guys that are leading the drill first and just kind of pick them out, make sure, obviously, I know how to say their name. But I want to get a feel for the team. I want to get a feel for the goalie specifically. You know, can I rattle them with a song maybe? Can I? Can, can we get the fans behind them? Just things like that. Um, but mostly I try to keep my voice saved, and then I just kind of watch the other team close. You uh, you mentioned you see if you can you know, find the right song to maybe get the other team's goalie rattled or something like that. You know, just like the hockey players are superstitious, I know when I've got my headset on, I'm superstitious. You know, are you superstitious? Like if you play a certain song and then right off the faceoff we get scored on, does that song get cut? Do we never hear that again at the Mesa? Do you have any kind of superstitions like that? I I don't have any song superstitions. I um, you know, I I wear the same shirt and the the same the same pair of pants and I didn't realize I was doing it. Um, <laughs> Got to have that sure lucky pair of underwear. I, I, I do change that. I park in the same <laughs> spot. Um, I park in the same spot. I walk in the same door. I do everything like that. And it was subconsciously, but when you think about it in the end, it's kind of like the routine, you know, I, I don't necessarily have a song. I would hate to, Oh, we got scored when I played this, you know, I, I don't do that, but I definitely do the other stuff. You mentioned singing in the shower. Gotta ask. I gotta ask. What's your song? What's your go-to song? My go-to song for 
if I'm doing like karaoke, yeah, okay, yeah, I I have a go to. Um, it's nothing special. It's uh, it's my Goo Goo Dolls, and it's the song Broadway. Okay, we'll see, right. we're we're gonna have to have you sing that yeah. on the ice or something at some point this year. <laughs> it's it's Broadway by Goo Goo Dolls. I just started singing it when there used to be a karaoke bar here in town, and it's just my go to. I remember the words, and there's it's not too high and not too low. I think we just found an intermission game. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we mentioned we've got preseason coming up. Regular season schedule should be coming out here soon. I know there's there's just a few little tweaks they're putting on it. Um, you know, with the season coming up, how excited are you? I know, I've asked you a little bit before, but just for not even the hockey aspect of being back in the Mesa, but just the social aspect, being back in the arena, seeing people that you see at every game. Um, yeah, how how much has that become a part of your life, and how how much are you looking forward to it? So I, I look forward in general to um, fall. Fall is my favorite season. Um, I look better in pants than I do in shorts, I've been told. <laughs> so I look forward to this fall. And what fall usually means is it, is the new sports are starting up with the kids. It means the football. And then and in terms of Toros, it means hockey. And so I look forward to the first day when it's like 58 degrees and we can start maybe thinking a little hockey. It's been weird with the NHL going on in August. It's been no break, um, but that's what I get excited for. Um, as far as getting in the rink, um, I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait to just see who's, what's going to happen. I can't wait to see some other teams. I mean, there's not that there's unfinished business that the season was, wasn't finished, but I think these kids are going to want to start off, uh, you know, not that they're antsy, but I think they're going to want to, like, get to it quick, and they're going to want to play. You know, there's going to be no warm-up. It's going to be right to it game one. And I like that. All right. Well, that's all I've got. Yeah, here. it's we'll let you uh, obey the wife's rules and get back get to, back uh, to the to Hayes. Yeah, and some Canucks hockey. Seth, appreciate you coming on. Always a pleasure talking with you, bud. Um, and best of luck. Uh, happy. Actually, health. wait. Before we let you go, you guys played softball together, didn't you? This summer, we did play softball together. Yes. Please tell me you have a good Peter story. Something something embarrassing that happened this summer. Peter Peter had one pretty bad game. Oh, it was bad. I will straight yeah, up admit one, it. One pretty bad game. He blamed the first ball on the sun, and I'll give you I'll give you one ball on the sun. Yeah. About the third ball that came to him, I just I didn't even turn around. I didn't even look at. Him. I just I played shortstop, and he's in the outfield. And by the third ball, I just I didn't I didn't even look. Hey, now with that being said, also Seth did miss few, a few balls this year too, so he can't put I them. A few. Yeah, you did miss a few. <laughs> All but right, anyway. we'll let we'll let you go for real this time. I just I had to, <laughs> I thought of that last minute. Had to had to get a quick shot in. I also hit more home runs than he did. Just throwing that out there too. You did probably. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, like I said, appreciate you coming on. Always a pleasure talking with you, and uh, look forward to this season. You bet, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Seth. Uh, a couple of questions about people asking. The preseason is going to be September 26th. September 26th, we'll have the Aberdeen Wings here in town. 4.30, a charity game benefiting Prairie Grit. It'll be... Uh, Before that, there's actually going to be a Prairie Grit g- sled game. Yeah, the, the Prairie Grit Prairie Grit kids will be out on the ice. Before that, I believe at 2 o'clock at 4.30, it'll be the Toros and the Aberdeen... Win- or no, Toros alum against the Minot All-Stars. Um, some good names coming for that. We just got uh, former UND uh, player Casey Johnson is coming back. Uh, he'll be joining Austin Dolomer, David Dahlbeck, Paul Sorensen, Matt Audette, Nick Sova, Bo Ricketts, Jake Rosenbaum, who Seth mentioned earlier. And, and we had uh, on Toros Weekly. Yep, and Jaden Martin. So a lot of big names coming back. We're going to be locking in a few more here over the next week or two. So... Excited to get that alumni game. That's at 4.30 on the 26th. And then as soon as that game wraps up, we're going to do a quick exam. And then the Toros of this year and this year's Aberdeen Wings will take the ice for warm-ups and, and play our first preseason game of the of the year. The rest of the schedule will be out here hopefully by September 1st. Hopefully. A lot of uh, exciting things. And we're starting to get back to it. Starting to get back to it. Missy Alexander asks if Jake Howie's coming back for the alumni game. I've talked to him like five times, and he's still on the fence. So, fans, if you know Jake Howie, you might want to pressure him into coming back a little bit too. 
I'm excited to see it because I haven't seen any of these alum play. Yeah. Um, and to be able to meet them and to be able to watch them play, even if obviously it's been a few years for some of them since they've played in a Toro's uniform, but just being able to see the excitement from the fans, from my standpoint, yeah, is going to be really cool. Yeah. I'm excited to see a lot of the guys, a lot of these guys I haven't seen in years, and then I'm excited for them to come back and see how much the program has grown from especially some of these year one guys. You know, I'd love to see what they think coming back, seeing the new Mesa, the new scoreboard that uh, Pepsi donated this summer. I can't wait to get that in and see these guys come out and see what the current Toros have now compared to, you know, the locker room over on the West Rink and having to make that walk to play on the middle rink, which, you know, I love the middle rink too. The Eck Rink was great. The atmosphere in there when we were playing in there and the place was packed was fun, but I'm really really excited for some of these guys to see how far the program's come in, in 10 years. It's been an experience for me for being here just now over a year, and you've been here for nine years, yeah. isn't it? So, this will be season nine for me, season 10 overall for the team. So. so A lot of experience, a lot of fun coming up soon, and it's all coming around quickly. So just a reminder, fans, if you do want to golf in our golf tournament on Friday with the coaches and staff of the Toros, Make sure you head over to our Dash auction and place your bid there as well as we have mystery bags, two mystery bags, mystery bags. Uh, Kyler Club and Jersey. Um, all kinds of good yeah, Some pucks again. Ton, yeah. So Toro Signature Summer is still rolling on, even though summer is just about coming to an end. So get out there, get uh, get some of those last signed goodies as well as, as Peter said, your chance to golf with the Toro staff. That's all I got for Sean Bach Oven. That's Ken Oda. I'm Peter Theodos. We'll see you later.